I'm redoing this for like the fourth time now. So we've got instant messages coming in like crazy, cell phone ringing, text coming in, landscapers showing up with equipment right outside the window. Let's see if I can knock this out for the fourth time. So um, we are now August 23rd, getting into uh, September. I want to see if I can make this quick. Uh, we had the midweek. Uh, update that I gave you guys with respect to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and their complete miscalculation of jobs. It looked like it was all these jobs being created. In reality, there wasn't. 800 plus thousand jobs miscalculated. Now, we have the minutes from the last Fed meeting where they had said, hmm, feels like jobs are overestimated. So they were smelling that. But we also know when it comes to cutting rates, and remember, guys, cutting rates from the Fed level doesn't exactly translate directly into mortgages. So because the Fed cuts rate doesn't mean you're going to get a lower interest rate there. Sometimes the Fed rate cut in certain circumstances can push rates up. That doesn't always happen that way, but it does. So just understand, this is not going to translate dollar for dollar. But so they talked about that and said, because now we see this job situation going on, the, the Fed's been talking about is rate cut on jobs. Or excuse, rate cuts will be pushed by jobs because that's what's going to push the economy into more of a uh, recession, if you will, which I think we've been in one for quite a bit. Some people are feeling recession. Others might not be, but there are some people really feeling it. Then you get to today where we have uh, the breakdown of uh, Powell's Jackson Hole speech. Or he said in there, the time has come for policy to adjust. The direction of travel is clear, and the timing and pace of rate cuts will depend on incoming data, the evolving outlook, and balance of risk. So he says it's time to start making those moves, but how much they do or if they do still has to be seen with certain things. He did indicate that the inflation is... Uh, is starting to go go down and says that uh, that inflation is starting to uh, see here is inflation has declined significantly is what was has was stated no declined significantly yes from the nine percent so it's not that the inflation has declined the uh, speed at which inflation is going up has slowed down there's a big distinction here people think inflation is going down no it's not inflation is still going up the fed's target is two percent inflation I mean going up your cost of living going up two percent per year according to their cpi the consumer price index which we already know is a bullshit metric to begin with because they're only measuring certain things but they're saying 2% per year. That's still inflation. That's still going up, but it was going up higher than that. We saw as high as 9% according to the CPI, which is probably closer to 18 in reality. Our current inflation is probably closer to 12, 11, something like that. Inflation is still going up. It's just not going up at the pace that it was at its max. So understand that. It's not like it, the cost of things is going down. It's still going up significantly. They just think we're getting closer to their measure of 2%, not the real measure of 2%. So as a result of that, we have some positive response in bonds. Let's take a look at this. So mortgage-backed securities, charts we've been looking at. We had some, you know, this was uh, Wednesday when I hurry up and came out with that, that little interesting uh, jump in there from the, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics error. And now we have today, which look at this, it went up to the same level that it did the same day that we had the Bureau of Labor Statistics data. So it went to that same peak and it went back down. Now, whether or not we trade and stay in that level, or maybe we come back down to the level where it closed that same day, hard to say. But what was the key thing of that whole day, the whole reason I even jumped in and started talking about uh, when, or talking Wednesday had to do with discovering this. When I looked at this, I started thinking, Hmm. I'm wondering, since this was a level I believe was going to maintain a strong sub, uh, ceiling, which it had in the past, and now we broke through the ceiling and we're staying above it. So I'm wondering what really happened that day they announced quantitative easing. This line here, 100.52 right now, I did have it 100.53, but I went back and really, really zeroed in. 100.52 represents the level that this security was at the day they announced quantitative easing. So now we go all the way back to that day, which is November 25th, 2008. This is where you can see right there, that level represents it right there. And then full trading went as high as this level here, which is 102.23. That's highest trading, but the day closed a 100.50-ish, 100.50, something like that. So since that's how it closed, I went ahead and put a line above that where it closed approximately and shaded this all in so that's when you go all the way across and that's how i discovered <laughs> interesting it opened where it opened on that day and it max traded where it closed that day and it stayed within it next day it opened just below that max trade and went rocketing down so and that was august 2nd 
in August 5th. So it was Friday, August 2nd, when the stock market took its beating, peaked out at the full trade or full close value of the day that they announced quantitative easing and came back. And now look at where we did that. This may be our new trading range. So that means right now, if we're at 100.87, we go to 100.50, that's about five-eighths of a percent or, or is what that would be in cost. So in reality, if we trade in this range, where we are today versus where we or where we're at right now versus where our peak would be is about five-eighths of a percent in cost. That's the difference. So if that's the case, you're not going to see a whole hell of a lot of movement in rates, maybe an eighth, maybe maybe a quarter, something like that in the full scheme of things. So if you're worried about trying to get the absolute best rate, you're not far off of it right now. So I wouldn't sit here and worry about it. And I'm also guessing it's an educated guess. I think it's a pretty damn good guess. And we'll see how good my guess is versus reality, because what we're trying to do here is guess or at least estimate the emotions of the market. We're trying to understand the human behavior. Are humans going to put more money into bonds? Are they going to put more into stocks, precious metals, commodities? Where are they going to put their money? Where are they going to invest their capital? And that's what drives all these things. Not the Fed, not what happens with the uh, with with um, the 10 year. I mean, although that is another uh, ev other evidence of human behavior when it comes to the markets. But that's all we're trying to do is understand human behavior. And we believe, I believe, that they're watching these things a little bit closer. There's evidence somewhere else to say these are our, these are our limits. This is the max value of this security unless it is moved upon by something greater, such as quantitative easing or massive market crashes within the stock market. So that's my thoughts. Take it and do with it what you want. Just like, subscribe, forward, do whatever the hell you want with this. But I'm just trying to get you all the best data I can. Have a kick-ass Friday and hope to talk to you with great news on Tuesday.